picks, I believe, will actually pick up seats. So focusing on the fact that the Republicans have a harder sled in the House, you ought to also focus on the fact that the Democrats will probably lose seats in the Senate. They might lose quite a few. Um, you're saying that the, the story of what's happening in the White House is being misreported. Um, yes. Maybe you don't want to believe what, what is coming out in the press, but um, it's not just... I read all of it. I read all of it and I watch your show. It's not just reporters saying this. It's members right. of your own party who are saying this. Ben Sass was talking to Hugh Hewitt uh, last week and he said this uh, about this op-ed. It's just so similar to what so many of us hear from senior people around the White House, you know, three times a week. So it's really troubling and yet in a way not surprising. That's Ben Sass. Bob Corker, another person. I think the biggest issue they're going to have is figuring out who would not have written a letter like that. So what do you say to them? I think it's really ironic to have uh, senators trying to criticize the White House because they think it's somehow dysfunctional when we have the most dysfunctional Congress, and Ben Sass himself says that on a regular basis. I don't think either of those gentlemen, I have a high, high, high regard for Ben Sass, but I don't think either of those gentlemen actually knows what's going inside the West Wing. Look, and both of them have been critics of the president and his policies, and so it's important to separate those two things. There's a lot of chaos that's accurately described that has been caused by an outsider president coming into Washington, D.C. with a two-by-four and shaking everything up. There are a lot of Republicans who are uncomfortable. Is, though, that he's just an outsider let, me guy, let me just finish ahead, the statement. Ahead. There's a lot of Republicans who are uncomfortable with the amount of change and, and, and sometimes unorthodox positions on issues that Donald Trump has brought to the city. But to seem to convert that into a White House team that isn't functioning on getting that agenda wrong, even though sometimes they do it better some days than other days, that is what is misreported. It's not a bit simplistic, though. I mean, you have, you have people telling Bob Woodward that uh, the president is almost getting us into World War III, that he's got to be pulled back. He's got to be pulled back from the brink. That James Who Mattis has people? to, I don't know, have to has to slow walk um, uh, the this decisions that the president problem. wants to make. He wants to assassinate Assad. He wants to right. pull um, the the family members of, of troops in South Korea out of South Korea, which would probably provoke North Korea, I potentially think, uh, get us into World War III. Those are very serious things. They are. And then on the other hand, I think they're, that they're analysis just, is somewhat simple too because but there's just you, other, you, there's you have a Matt, president me, sure Go ahead. let me finish the other thing is the president himself it's not as if he's just trying to change policy the president himself is is lying on a daily basis he's not telling the truth i don't when think you that's look, right well that's true though when you look at the economy no, it's not it is true when you look it at not. it is true i mean the washington post it's has not a true. tally I don't, the washington true. post believe it or not for, for let me, I'll, show you, I'll show you an example <laughs> i'll show you matt i'll show you an example just and i'll show you examples where the washington post is getting things wrong so it goes both ways People 4, may, and, and, and that is an plus that thing Katie, wrong in the Katie, last Katie, I'd like a chance days. to respond here. I'd like a chance to talk now. I think what you're saying is overly simplistic. You have a president who actually communicates more to the whole globe than any president we've ever seen. If you want to know what he thinks about something, just turn to his Twitter feed. The idea that there's some kind of secretive uh, aspect to Donald Trump opinions is ridiculous. He puts it all out there for people to see. And the problem with Bob Woodward, I've read about half of his books. I hope to read this book. I have a lot of respect for him. But it's, it's easy to take a lot of little details in a book and to come up with the wrong conclusion as to what's really happening in a White House. And if his conclusion is that the president is somehow unmoored from reality and is a danger, I would say that that is a gross mischaracterization of this president. And as far as the lying is concerned, every single one of these supposedly independent outfits that are determining whether or not the president is lying or telling the truth are funded by left-wing donors like George Soros. And I'm sorry, I want NBC News and other media outlets to rely on their own reporting and not on the reporting of these websites okay, me, and blog let sites me, let that me put something on the screen 9,000 times Let a day. me put something on the screen for you. Let's talk sure. about a tweet the president sent out today mm -hmm. on the economy. He says the GDP rate, 4.2 percent, is higher than the unemployment rate, 3.9 percent, for the first time in over 100 years. There are some apples to oranges there. We'll leave that aside. It is sure. not, though, for the first time in over a hundred years. That is factually incorrect. When was the last time that was true? That happened during George W. Bush, 2006. It's so, happened multiple times before that. That's so factually, do you think when he said the true. years... So, so is, he, is he just not aware of how, of how those numbers work? Or is he uh, putting it out there knowing it's <laughs> false? What's happening there? Uh, all I would say is, is this. 
is that the apples and the oranges when it comes to economic analysis actually matter. What kind of data are you looking at? No, hold we on, all Matt. Know, you're, you're, we yeah, all don't know. go to apples and oranges. You're missing, he says it's you're the missing. first time in over 100 years. That is not Katie, true. But the part that I don't know how many years it is, but what's the point of the tweet? The point of the tweet is, is that for all Americans, liberals and conservatives, Democrats and Republicans, no matter the color of your skin, there's greater economic opportunity today. Why won't before, he just come out and say Don something that is true that doesn't force everybody to fact check him? Is the me, point is the point that he enjoys it when the press fact checks him because then he can make it look like we're his foil? Is that intentional what he's doing or does he just not understand the numbers and does he not care about being correct when he's talking to the American people? Or do you, or, or when the press gets it wrong? Are they lying? This is my problem, Katie. My problem no, when we you don't say lie. he lies. And when we do get it wrong, we come out and we say we got it not, wrong, and we apologize, and we correct Katie, it. Katie, all I would say is, is that you are making a moral determination when you say a politician lies. There are times when politicians get it right and politicians get it wrong. On that tweet, I don't know how many years it's been, but I do know this for Americans. It's historic to have the unemployment rate be below the, gro the uh, GDP rate. And that's a good thing for all of us. So what you do is you try to find the one little way in which there's a flaw and no, you but miss but the general the point. point. He could just come out and say something true and that would be the end of it. Just say something true and that would be he the says, end of it. And we'd report that that is he true. He did say something but when true. He does, but, but is it true? He, is it true <laughs> that the unemployment rate is historically low and the economic growth is historically high? It's not true that it's high. the first time in over a hundred years. It is How many not years is it? true. Two thousand six was not a hundred years ago. Okay, but the point is, is this, which is the economy is doing well, and you should cover that. I would like to cover that, I, but I, I'm forced to fact check the president on the smallest little and he, things. And we are forced to fact check day. you. By the way, it's going both ways. There are plenty of things I watch on your network that I don't find to be factually inaccurate. Why don't we not morally judge each other on our motive and simply get to the facts? When the president's wrong on the facts, call him on that. But don't take the we next do. step by saying he's immoral and a liar. And I won't do the same thing to NBC when Here, they make here's, mistakes. Here's, here's my problem with that statement. I've been following the president for a long time, as you very well know. The president said a lot of things in the campaign trail that we could corrected him over and over again on, gave him a lot on in terms of uh, whether or not he was uh, for the war in Iraq or against the war in Iraq. And he continued to say these things over and over and over again, knowing that they were not true. That's so, Katie, one example. You, there are examples think, of crime stats that he did. These things, when he says them over and over and over again, after he has already been fact-checked, then you have nothing to, then, then the only conclusion is that he knows he's lying and he's doing well, it on purpose. Let me just tell you, for half of the, you know, the country's split, unfortunately, right? And uh, if you look at poll after poll after poll, we're very polarized. I believe 34% of the country says the president is not or is. We're very polarized politically. <laughs> and when you, Just so you know, if you want to be viewed and your show wants to be viewed as just calling the balls and strikes and the facts, when you take the extra step to say the president is a quote unquote liar and that even when he's corrected, he's continued to lie, do you understand why people who have a conservative or Republican point of view and actually see the facts and come to a different moral conclusion while they have trouble understanding why you have to make the moral step? Why do you have to say that he's done something immoral? You could have a disagreement on what the truth is. And I think that's what's happening in our society more and more. I actually think Donald Trump was against the war in Iraq. I watched all that coverage. Yes, there was some confusion, but there was no confusion with me with, with watching him and listening to him in his lead up to run for the president and during the war. I worked for the president who, uh, who is the one who executed that war. It was, it's painful to hear those criticisms, but those criticisms did come from Donald Trump frequently. I'm just going to leave it here. Matt, and it's been enjoyable having you on. We appreciate it. Thank you, Latest Katie. Quinnipiac poll, 32% of the country finds him honest. Just 32%. So... Not and what the about press. the news media, Katie? What is your look at the poll for how the American people view the news media? You're at the cellar. So That's it's on the unfair. rise. Actually, their, their opinion in the news so media is on the rise. Matt Schlapp, I'm going to have to leave the it rise? there. On the rise? Well, that's Matt quite Schlapp. an accomplishment.